Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm it's Robbie Rhino and in today's video I'll be reviewing the WZ-11-66 which is an Era 1 heavy tank for the Eastern Alliance in the Cold War game mode and this particular heavy tank is the level 100 season pass reward for the Red Tiger season that started this week so I'll be telling you everything you need to know about this tank. I'll show you my equipment and commander setup and I have three replays for you to try and demonstrate how I play this tank and how I get the most out of it and if you haven't guessed from the um, thumbnail and the description I find this heavy tank to be very mediocre and quite disappointing but having said that you can have some good games with this tank it'll make you some good silver and if you've bought the pass then you know why not give it a go especially if you like your heavy tanks so the first replay you're seeing in the background is on Mannheim which is a fairly good map for this tank it's got some areas that I'm able to use the terrible gun depression of this tank and the armor of this tank to my advantage and you'll see me set up a kind of defensive position on a bridge in a minute showing you the capabilities of the side armor and when you are side scraping and it works quite well in this replay and that's one of few sort of positive aspects of this tank but anyway, let's get stuck straight into the statistics of this tank then. So it has 2,200 hit points, which is about where it should be. It has quite low sort of view range at 435 meters, but with the true vision system and it being a heavy tank, you're going to want to try and get into uh, short to mid range engagements and side scrape and use your armor and your turret armor to your advantage. So it's not too much of an issue. In terms of its mobility, uh, you go 50 kilometers an hour forwards, uh, but unfortunately it has only 15 kilometers an hour backwards, so getting out of trouble if you get yourself into it, which I do quite frequently, it can be a bit of a pain. In terms of its traverse, it's not great news as well. It's 28 degrees a second on its hull and 22 degrees a second on its turret, meaning that if things like a Scorpion or a Scimitar or any faster light or medium tank is trying to circle you, it can be a bit of a pain, so you're going to have to watch out for that. And its power to weight ratio is 13.48, which isn't too bad for a heavy. It sort of keeps up with things like the T95E3. So yeah, it's, it's not too bad. It's not one of the worst aspects of this tank. So then we come on to the gun, which is um, good and bad news in a way. It's a 120, 122 millimeter gun with 390 alpha damage. And I was kind of hoping it being a Cold War heavy tank, it would have sort of 440 alpha damage on this 122 millimeter gun, especially because you low roll because of the RNG changes or the difference between the RNG in Cold War compared to the World War II game mode. But having said that, it's still a relatively large chunk of damage you take from your opponents. So it's 390 alpha damage on its standard APCR rounds and 390 on its premium heat rounds and it has 530 alpha damage on its HE rounds. The penetration is low on its standard APCR rounds at only 248 millimeters of penetration which is why I carry 10 rounds of heat which is 320 millimeters of penetration and bear in mind that APCR loses penetration over distance whereas heat doesn't so if you're firing at long range you might want to uh, switch out and try the heat rounds. In terms of the HE rounds it's 61 millimeters of penetration for 530 alpha damage but I didn't carry any I just carry APCR and heat. Um, another bad point and I know there's quite a few that I'm going to be going over in this video is the shell velocity. It's slow at 930 meters a second on the APCR, even slower at 820 meters a second on the heat and even slower again at 795 meters a second on the HE and it's just not sort of a good um, value in my opinion for shooting at mid to long ranges you're going to have to want to give a lot of lead and this gun feels quite derpy even with a nine skill commander and you know a good equipment setup so you're going to have to watch out for that and sometimes the, the shells just have a mind of their own and they just derp up into the sky or to the ground as you'll see in these replays in terms of its DPM, it has a 5.45 rounds a minute of a DPM of 2,125. 
11 second reload which is quite long and a long aim time at 2.7 seconds and one of the worst things is the accuracy at 0.42 meaning that it is extremely inaccurate even with a nice skill commander like I said and a good equipment choice um, so yeah don't be surprised if sometimes your shells just decide to derp or they miss the target and for a sort of cold war tank it, it's incredibly frustrating especially if you're firing at mid ranges to long ranges Another bad point about this tank is the gun depression which is only 5 degrees meaning that a lot of ridge lines you just can't use unless you expose more of your tank than you want to but it does have 23 degrees of gun elevation which is more than enough and it carries 45 rounds of ammunition and with that long reload you definitely won't be running out of that. In terms of its armour then, um, it's similar to the Alpine Tiger if you played that in World War II game mode. It's got 230mm of armour on the front of the turret, 120 on the sides and 60 on the rear. Uh, if you're using your 5 degrees of gun depression, your effective turret armour is about 280mm to 300mm to the left and right of the mantlet. And if people do shoot at your turret and they shoot the sort of far edges of the turret, you're looking at about 350mm of effective armour, so that will bounce quite a lot of rounds, especially in Era 1. Without your gun depression, if people are looking straight at you, um, it's roughly about the same. To the right of the mantlet, there is a small spot which is about 280mm, but obviously um, people will have to be firing sort of premium rounds in Era 1 to go through your turret like that. In terms of your hull, if people are looking at you straight on, your hull is about 230mm of effective armour. And if you're using your gun depression, it goes up to about sort of 300mm. And it's kind of piped like an IS-3 is. So if something's uh, side scraping, just shoot the armoured plate which is nearest you and you should go through. So in that game we finish with um, 4.2k direct damage, 834 assistance, we block 3.4k, 4k was to make some nice silver and finish MVP. So we'll hop on into the second replay and talk some more about this tank. So we're now into the second replay of the video and we're here on Vineyards and you'll see me in this replay sort of testing out the shell velocity and the accuracy of this tank this is one of the first games i played when i got this tank and um i missed quite a lot of shots but i end up having a decent game especially a decent game considering that i find this tank quite disappointing and quite um quite poor really um but we'll just finish off talking about the armor sort of values and then i'll show you my equipment and my commander setup and then we'll get talking about what's happening in the gameplay so in terms of that plate i just talked about at the end of the last video it's not as pronounced as an is3 but it kind of does have a sort of pipe nose down front so if this tank is side scraping against you and it's showing you the front of its hull you just aim to the armoured plate which is nearest you and it's roughly 200 millimeters of effective armour and you should go through that no problem. Um, the other two things to mention are the um, cupolas and the armour values on them range from about 180 millimeters to 250 millimeters, depending on whether this tank is using its gun depression so you're going to go through it most of the time so that's the best place to aim if all you can see is the turret or you can just put heat straight through the front of the turret um, whichever <laughs> whichever way you want to go um, you're still going to make silver and cold war so um, no wonder people fire a lot of gold I, I fire a lot of gold sometimes myself um, I don't find heat particularly useful in Cold War but in Era 1 you can make it work where there is slightly less space armor than there is in Era 2 and Era 3 so in terms of my equipment and my commander setup then with my equipment I run a gun stabilizer improved ventilation and advanced loader I'm just trying to increase my DPM uh, increase my accuracy and the vents just to improve everything about this tank including the accuracy and a tiny little boost to my view range although that isn't too important in terms of my commander i run sixth sense born leader rapid loading steady aim snapshot rapid aim run and gun situational awareness and armor angling which is a fairly sort of typical um, heavy tank setup that i've used in cold war a lot of gun handling perks as you can see that I'm getting frustrated in the gameplay in the background and that's the reason I'm running all these gun handling uh, perks and skills is just to try and try and improve my gun handling and uh, make it less frustrating um, 
than it already is with all of the other sort of downsides to this tank. Um, with my equipment and my commander setup, that pushes my view range to 517 meters. It pushes my accuracy to 0.29, and I now have a DPM of uh, 2,905, which is a lot better than what it is when it doesn't have any equipment or any commander skills to the tank. So in this gameplay in the background, you'll see that I have fired a lot of shots already, and I've only picked up make that 2.7k uh, damage and 244 assistance and I was getting really frustrated I know this isn't meant to be a sniper like I said at the start of the sort of video but I didn't want to go over to the A5 location I can't use that ridge line I'll just be sniping at the same position just from a different angle uh, in the middle of the field obviously that's not meant for a heavy tank and people are going to be shooting down on me meaning my armor is weaker and I haven't got any teammates this side for me to push on so I'm just shooting at what is spotted and I have some nice slide shots here and you'd think that most guns in Cold War would be able to hit this sort of range, it's sort of like 500 to 600 meters, be able to um, you know, hit their targets relatively reliably but this thing even fully aimed with a 9 skill commander is very derpy and I think a lot of players that don't have a 9 skill commander and uh, you know people that don't run a commander at all which apparently is quite common which was in the stream on Friday which I'm uh, not completely surprised about but it's surprising how many people don't actually use a commander at all or trade one up uh, no wonder people don't realize they're spotted um, they're gonna struggle in this tank and I think it's only kind of more experienced players and players that enjoy that heavy tank gameplay um, side scraping and being patient that are going to get the most out of this tank um, you see me here pushing forward and that's because I noticed that we're winning the game and I just want to try and get some more out of this uh, out of this game and this is the kind of thing that you can do is preserve your hit points kind of similar to a light tank but in a in a different kind of way preserve your hit points at the start of the battle and then go in and use your armor at the end to push up your damage or you can set up a defensive location like I did in the first replay, side scrape, get hold down, um, hold back a flank and hopefully your teammates will be able to circle around and get shots into what you are holding back. Um, it feels just frustrating with the reload with this gun depression as you can see you, you, get, you have to go up to fire at anything. Um, you have to be careful to fully aim your shots and even when you do it does miss which is frustrating. You do sort of take fairly big chunks out of your enemies um, but obviously with the RNG changes uh, all the differences between the World War 2 and the Cold War game mode you roll a lot lower you know this 390 alpha gun you've seen me rolling for like 2 260 to 280 which is so frustrating um, especially when this Centurion 51 is probably going to roll now um, <laughs> high and finish me off I had to sort of snap that shot into the left because that friendly right in front of me unfortunately for me that means the centurion 5 one minutes just finished me off but we still have a decent game for this tank and this is kind of average kind of game if you're a relatively sort of experienced player this is kind of an average decent game you'll have in this tank so we finish mvp with that one as well with five kills 4.5k direct damage block 630 get 2.1k assistance get the mastery badge and yeah make a nice lot of silver again which is always a benefit of playing cold war tanks so we're gonna hop on now into the third and final replay which is the best game i've had in this tank yet and probably the best fun i've had in this tank yet so i'll talk you through that one in just a second so we're now into the third and final replay of the video and we're here on red shirt and it's not the sort of most ideal map for a heavy tank that um, is bright red and that's something that I haven't actually talked about yet and I probably should do. So this is the skin for this tank and as you can see it's bright red. I don't run the HDR so the high dynamic resolution so in game this is a lot brighter for those of you that have um, HDR TVs or monitors and in true vision this thing does stick out like a sore thumb it looks okay I guess um, I'm not a massive fan of it but it isn't the worst thing I've seen in World of Tanks console but yeah um, I do question whether you're going to want to use just a, 
a better camo or just um, no camo at all because your concealment rating isn't anything um, to brag about in this uh, big heavy tank and it's not going to be useful anyway uh, with the true vision system considering how big you are. Um, so yeah, that, that is one thing to think about. Um, I don't know what you guys think of the uh, camo, let me know in the comments. Uh, it's okay, but yeah, it's bright red and yeah, a bit of a weird choice um, when you're able to be spotted or you're able to be visible anyway, all of the time. So it's not a good map anyway because of the open nature of this um, of this map and all of the ridge lines and I only have five degrees of gun depression so you'll see me come over here to a position that I know that I can use well and there is a rock to the left of me where I'm able to duck down and hide from tanks that are coming along the one line I'm able to spot out quite a few tanks here uh, even with the relatively poor view range that this heavy tank has and I'm just trying to wiggle back and forth on this ridge line I mean if someone's trying to shoot at me hopefully they'll hit a um, a high effective uh, armor angling on my turret and bounce or try and bait people to shoot the sort of sides of your tank and that's the best thing that you can do to try and bounce shots with this tank. Um, as you can see when you're fighting against sort of medium tanks especially like the Centurion 2's T-44A's even that T-54 um, likely going to penetrate me um, but I'm, I'm likely going to bounce like the Centurion 2 and the T-44A and if you're trading one for one, which I'm trying to do, um, you're going to win the battle usually against most of the tanks that you come up against apart from things like the T-95E3 um, or something that has an extremely high DPM. So yeah, try and trade one for one. Um, try and side scrape, try and get hold down, um, try and think about locations where you have hard cover to side scrape from, um, locations where you're able to sort of get hold down into a sort of small size ridge line. And yeah, don't sort of skylight yourself on top of a ridge line because you're bright red, you're slow at reversing at 15 kilometers an hour. And um, although the armor is relatively decent, it definitely doesn't hold up to too many shots against players. Um, that are experienced and know where to shoot you. Having said that, there are a lot of new players in Era 1, so you can get lucky and come up against new players. Obviously, if you're a new player yourself, um, it can be hard to learn in Era 1 because a lot of experienced players do play Era 1 when the new tanks come out especially, and just to make silver. I do it myself, not to sell club, I promised, <laughs> just to make silver and try out the new tanks. And you can definitely tell when someone's... Um, a newer player and obviously there's nothing wrong with that but it does make me think like I am very privileged to have um, a lot of dying skill commanders silver gold and I can swap commanders around I can you know buy th three lots of equipment for every one of my tanks and that's something that uh, yeah recent comments to my videos have made me think about so um, don't be discouraged if you're having sort of poorer results don't expect too much when you're watching um, a lot of youtubers and twitch streamers because they're more than often um, experienced players um, just take their advice if you think it's good um, keep working at it and you will get there um, and this is a tank especially that a lot of people are going to get um, probably in like a month's time towards like the ends of the season or the last like couple of weeks of the season there'll be a lot of these around and people um, are going to be playing these and I think a lot of people are going to struggle in them uh, I find it kind of boring kind of play style because of the reload and the mobility and the gun depression I prefer faster tanks uh, sneakier tanks but that's just me but as you can see in this replay here um, yeah we've managed to have um, a good impact we spotted at the start we traded one for one we've used our armor quite effectively and um and yeah I, it's just mediocre i can't say it's extremely poor um, it's definitely not good it's kind of middle of the road for um expectations for like marks of excellence if you look on uh, whatclans.br and yeah, it's just it's just mediocre, there's nothing more to say about it. But I hope I've given you a good sort of rundown and overview of this tank and how to play it. So in our third and final replay there, we finished MVP, making 230,000, get our another ace tanker, 1,692 base experience points, 4.6k direct damage, 3.1k assistance, and we blocked 1,190, showing you that the armor is capable of blocking quite a few rounds and it might keep you in it. 
and if you're not a fan of sort of the medium tanks and you find you're you're getting out of the battle too early maybe play this try, try side scraping get and hold down and try staying in the battle for a bit longer and trying the heavy tank um the heavy tank sort of play style so thank you all so much for watching this video i hope you have all or you're all having an awesome weekend uh, until next time i'll see you on the battlefield and bye for now